Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. For this example, I'm going to go through how to make, and this is a common concept within crime analysis, a temporal heat map. So when I say that, we're interested in the day, the week, and hour of the day. The data set you see in front of you I obtained from the Houston Police Department through a FOIA request. This is for calendar year 2017. You can see at the top the variable name, so I have incident number, so that's our unique ID. Each row is a separate incident. We have the report day, report hour, the offense type, these are part one. The beat, which is unique to each jurisdiction, this one being Houston. The street number, street name, street type. Those you can use if you wanted to geocode your data in another program. Luckily, Houston PD, even though it says X and Y coordinate at the top, that's the latitude and longitude of each incident. So I don't have to go on a map, they already provided it for us. You can use this in Excel with the power mapping tool. But for today, I'm interested in making a temporal heat map. With that, sounds fancy, but in reality, it's just a count of day of week, hour of day, and then you can put a filter on based on the offense type. So with that, we luck out and when Houston sent it over, they gave the reported hour. A lot of agencies give you the call time itself. This one, they broke it down and gave us hour, which is ideal for us. That means we don't have to do as much with it. But what we do need to do is get the day of the week. Here we have the actual date itself, and you can see up here it's reported as a date. We can change that, and I'm just going to highlight the entire column, and I'm going to make that into a long date. So here we can see January 1st of 2017 was a Sunday. Now I want to pull out and just use that Sunday, though, because I want to use a count of that. So if I go to Insert, and at the top I'm just going to label this Day, because it is Day of Week. I hit Enter. So with that, I'm just going to hit equals, and I'm wanting to take a text part out of it. So with that, I type text, the value here, it's for cell B2, and I'm going to hit comma, and for to pull out the day, it's going to be four Ds, and I'm going to close that off from the date, and it pulls out Sunday. Great. Now if you hit highlight this and hit the green square in the right-hand corner, it's going to auto-fill the rest of those for you. And you might look at it and it's like, well, that's all Sunday. But if you scroll down, you can start to see there's variation across those based on the day of the week. It's pulling that and it's matching accordingly. And that's ideal. That's what you want to see. It's just a double way to visualize and spot check it did it correctly. So with that, I'm going to hit save just in case Excel decides to shut down. It's notorious kind of to do that with larger data sets. But now we just want to insert a pivot table. So with that, I'm going to highlight the top row that have variables in it. Hold down control shift, hit the down arrow. I've now highlighted all of the crime incidents for 2017 in Houston, just over 119,000. With that, I'm gonna to go to insert, pivot table. Now, since I already have the data highlighted, you can see here it's the same section here that's highlighted, selected for it. I'm gonna open it in a new worksheet, hit okay. I'm just gonna relabel this at the bottom, temporal heat map. Now we can start to get going. So with that, we have day of the week and reported hour. So I'm going to click reported hour. And you can see here it generates from midnight to 11 p.m. There could be blank ones that it's not reported. There's a date range. Houston could be different. A lot of agencies, when they have, say, property crime, residential burglary is a good example. The time becomes an issue because if you leave for a weekend and you come back, when you call in, it's going to be the reported time, but the day range of when it could possibly occur, it could have been Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, at any point during those. So keep in mind this, when you're using a temporal heat map, it's keep in mind what crime type you're looking at. Some has more meaning than others. So we have the reported hour, we're good to go there. To go ahead and just look at it, since we say we're interested in the count. So here we're just, the incident, this has it as sum. We don't want to add, because that's remember, that's just a unique ID. We want to change the sum to be a count. So we're going to count how many incidents there were during each hour. And you can see here, there's variation across. And there were all three that had blanks in it. So we do see change over time of day. Not surprisingly, when you get into the midday, you see our peaks. That's to be expected, just given normal routine activities. People are sleeping later at night, less people out committing crimes, the opportunity for crime, the opportunity itself shifts. So with that, let's look at day of the week now. So since we have day of the week, we can move the day to the columns. And now we see 
it broken down by day, a week, and time of day. Now you might think, well, Sunday should go at the end. Easy enough. So if we click on Sunday, then right click, and just hit move, and go say move to the end. Now we have Sunday at the end, starting with Monday. Now looking at this, it might be difficult to say, well, yes, I see variation in numbers, but it's hard to identify where there's peaks and valleys within it. So if we highlight the data itself, and I'm gonna leave out the blank ones in this, so Monday through Sunday, from midnight to 11 p.m., we have all of our data. I'm gonna go back to the home screen. I'm gonna to go to conditional formatting, and I want a color scale. And I want red to be the high period, so the peaks when there's the more crime. And I can do this by hitting that second one there. Now you can tease out what are the high points based on time of day, so hour of day and day of the week. So you see variation here, and this is a nice example of a quick temporal heat map. And you can see when are prime times for crime. But keep in mind, this is across 119,000 different crime types. Not all of those are gonna be the same. So depending on the crime itself, you might see differences. So with that, if you notice in the pivot table field, you have the option for a filter. So if we go ahead and choose the offense type, and I'm gonna put it into filter itself, you see over here it generates offense type at the top in cell A1 and B1 itself. Right now it's all. So say we're interested in uh, ag assault only. I select that and I hit OK. Now we start to see a different temporal heat map based on a subset of the, all the crime data itself. The ag assaults were just over 12,000 of the 119,000. So we see a different temporal picture when looking at the specific offense type. Here ag assault, we have it broken down by hour of day and day of the week. So here it's later at night and some of the early mornings, especially on the weekends, you see an uptick in those as well. So it gives you a different picture than say, let's look at another crime type such as theft. We see theft is greater during the day and especially during the week. If you think about people going to and from work, the opportunity for theft varies and this is Houston specific. So we see change in that. And we keep in mind there was about 119,000 incidents. Theft made up about just over 67,000 of those. So you see that there are differences in the temporal heat maps or temporal nature of the crime types just by looking at the frequency of each one across day of week and time of day. This is a quick way to get a visualization of crime occurrence. This is just for one year, one city, in an example of two crime types itself. So you can do this across multiple data sets, but it gives you an understanding if you wanna do sub analysis or look at a specific crime type, day of the week, the interaction of both day of week and time of day or hour of day, this is important to look at. So this is just one example of how to do that and a quick way to visualize your data that when you put it in a presentation, a paper, typically people enjoy seeing because it it's pattern recognition. You're starting to detect patterns within your data and this is just a way to look at the temporal variation in your data itself. If there's questions, please reach out to me. I'm gonna make a series of different pivot tables itself and how to use them in different fashions, mostly around crime analysis. So please reach out if you would like me to make another type of video itself. Cheers, bye.